Hello guys, this is going to be a review of the Qnix QX2710 LED 27 inch 2560 by 1440p PLS monitor. Yes, that is a lot of words to say, but this monitor is absolutely amazing. Now, to the right is actually an ASUS gaming monitor, and I have a review on that. Post them in the in the description below. But if you've been with me for you know quite some time, you probably have seen the review already. And to break it down, monitors are actually divided into different kind of subsections in terms of their technical capabilities, prim primarily the uh, image quality aspects. And the ASUS monitor to the right over there runs on a TN panel architecture, while the Qnix over here runs on a PLS panel architecture. Now, a TN panel is known for its fast refresh rates, which is great for gaming and great for 3D because 3D needs uh, fast uh, frames per second per, to pretty much allow for the frame splitting to give you that 3D effect. To break it down even more, there's also a technology called IPS. There are other technologies, but I'm just going to break it down into three different technologies for this review. So you have IPS, and then you have PLS, and then you have TN. I just described TN in a brief um, segment. PLS, which is this monitor over here, is a, more known for picture quality aspects. It has very accurate uh, color renderation, which is great for photography work and great for people who just essentially want, you know, as good as picture quality as it can pretty much get for your like your gaming experience, your movie experience, whatever you may want to use the monitor for. So typically TN panels are the cheapest of the bunch because it's fairly easy to make these panels while PLS and IPS panels are often more expensive because of their picture quality. The monitor that you see right here which is the QNX on the left, I actually had a Dell 24, it's basically it goes by the model name of Dell S2740L. That is an IPS 27 inch monitor, but the reason why I don't really, you know, have it anymore is essentially because it, it's, a it's a 1080p display with a 27 inch screen size. So, being that I'm sitting fairly close to this monitor, 1080p actually is too low. You can begin to see the pixels, and the overall image is sort of soft and doesn't have that n nice crispness. Of a, a monitor with a you know an adequate PPI level, so I eventually started to look at 1440p monitors, and the price for those monitors are, you know, they're very very expensive, especially the ones from like Apple, which is about a thousand bucks for their cinema. You have 1440p monitors from Dell, Samsung, ViewSonic, Asus, HP. The list goes on. So I eventually stumbled across message boards and forums particularly about like hardcore gaming users, gaming PC, um, you know, people just wanted to come together and to share their experiences. I've seen a lot of these Korean um, 1440p monitors, you know, going around on the web and they're just like blowing up and a lot of people are buying them. So I started to do more research and realized that essentially this monitor right here, which retails for $329 free shipping, uses the same panel that's in the Apple Cinema which costs $999, as well as other models from like Samsung and Dell, which also cost about $800, dollars $1,000. The reason being that this monitor is essentially so cheap is because it's using an A- minus stock as opposed to the A- plus stock that those higher expensive monitors are using. Now, to break it down even further, the A- minus stock monitors are essentially monitors that may keyword may come with some dead pixels on the screen as well as some backlight bleeding on the bottom edge of the screen or anywhere else but keep in mind the picture quality is essentially the same now they do have services primarily on eBay that will guarantee that your monitor does not have any dead pixels but you do have to pay a premium and the monitor price kinda escalates up to 400 or even 500. You have monitors from like Overlord, Yamasaki, I'm not even sure if I've even pronounced that right, Cat Leap. They will guarantee that your monitor has no dead pixels. This monitor that I bought, which is from Amazon, the guarantee was that it would have no more than five dead pixels. Not any. Now get this here. I don't see any dead pixels on this monitor. And if I do see it, it's probably in an area which is probably in the corners, which you don't even look at. So I essentially got a monitor with no perceivable dead pixels. Now, before I even get to the point 
before I even uh, make you start to think essentially that, all right, I just got an exact replica of an Apple Cinema or something, I do have some backlight bleeding on the bottom edge right there. It really only shows itself in completely black images, so other than that, basically when I'm using the monitor, which is 99% of the time, you're not going to just have a complete black image, I don't see the backlight bleeding, and essentially I am getting beautiful picture quality. I mean, I can't really stress how beautiful this picture quality is. This monitor is a 1440p display, so the PPI is amazing, especially for the distance that I sit at. Images are completely crisp. You're going to have to kind of get used to how small everything gets because of the uh, the increased pixel, but it does improve your workstation um, flow, especially your multitasking abilities because you can now stretch across um, a lot more applications in Windows and put them around the screen. Um, a lot of web pages that I'm loading now, it gets to the point where there's so much real estate on the side, like YouTube for instance, you can't even, it's like when I load YouTube, the entire other half of the screen is white, which means that I can essentially just run YouTube and just cut the entire br browser in half and be able to do whatever I want with the other half of the screen. So with 1440p, your multitasking ability and your you know your, your workstation flow is going to be a lot more effective. The downside to 1440p is with more pixels means more graphical horsepower that's necessary from your computer. Now this monitor's connections is very limited. You only have one video input and that is either a DVI-I or DVI-D connection but it has to be dual link. It cannot be single link. Dual link has the extra bandwidth capacity which allows for a 2560 by 1440 connection. DVI-I essentially stands for a connection that can either allow analog or digital to pass through and DVI-D means that it's just strictly digital. So this means that you're not going to be gaming with any game console or any laptop for instance with this monitor. This monitor requires a dedicated graphics card that has a dual link dedicated DVI connection coming out of it. So yes this monitor is highly picky and when you do spend the extra bucks for those you know more um, expensive 1440p which essentially has the same picture quality and everything but they do have far more connections and built-in scalers which allow you to use game consoles that can adjust their frame rate and resolutions for the monitor. One amazing thing that this monitor also has is the ability to overclock. Now some of you may be wondering how on earth do you overclock a monitor? Essentially you're just going to push its refresh rate up a bit further. Now most monitors typically come at a refresh rate of about 60 hertz which is essentially 60 frames a second. This monitor can be overclocked to 120 frames per second and usually that is dedicated to monitors that run on the TN panel architecture. So essentially you can have a PLS panel, keep in mind if you are basically uh, listen earlier, PLS offers better picture quality, color vibrancy and everything and you can have that running at a 120 frames per second refresh rate, it's absolutely amazing. But mo the majority of users, they're, you, you really have to get a, a really lucky monitor because what happens is at 120 hertz, since this monitor is essentially not really meant to run at that, you do start to see a bit of artifact and line segments across the screen. But you're somewhat guaranteed to get this monitor to run at 96 hertz, which is still really smooth. At 96 hertz, though, and 120 hertz, you do get some image retention, which kind of makes the uh, the gamma a bit too high, which kind of crushes the black and dulls out the colors. But there are ICC profiles that you can go and search for, which sort of corrects that and makes the image a lot more natural. But when it's at 60 hertz, it offers the best picture quality possible and that is why I use that 60 Hertz. Some of the grips that I have with this monitor is pretty much the stand and that's just pretty much it. The stand is not as as rigid as I'd like because when I bump the table the monitor sort of like wiggles and then eventually it stops but other than that if I can really get as picky as possible, I'll say that maybe the aesthetics isn't as great as I'd like. It's still a really nice and sleek looking monitor, but the Dell S2740L that I have, I mean, I had previously, 
that was a beautiful looking monitor. It looked pretty much near like an Apple Cinema. Those are some really nice looking monitors, but this monitor is mainly, you know, it's more functional of a style, and I really respect that. Uh, what else can I pretty much mention other than that this monitor is pretty much epic. The picture quality is just absolutely amazing. If you have a gaming PC, you really need to get this monitor. That's just all I can say. It's just... It completely like the, the this Asus that I have over here. Now that I have them side by side, I can really see the drawbacks of a TN panel. The colors aren't accurate. There, it's overly saturated. The blacks are gray. It's just a list of list of like. It, it's just I I just stopped looking at that monitor. I just use it straight for Xbox, and then it's just amazing how PLS and IPS looks over TN. So. In conclusion, I highly recommend this monitor. I'm going to post a link specifically to the Amazon that I got. I also post some, maybe some eBay links because most of the people buy from eBay, but it's starting to come into Amazon. Um, $329, man. It's like you, you really can't go wrong. Yeah, you, you kind of do have to deal with, you know, out of country in terms of warranty purposes if you do get a dud or your monitor dies one week down the line. But other than that, it's still a really good deal. So if you guys have any questions or comments that I maybe they're not answering this video, feel free to post them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Later.